The consideration of density altitude relates to takeoff and climb performance as well as to en route terrain clearance. Remember that service ceiling number in the book is based on standard conditions. If it is warmer than standard, the airplane won't make it to that number on the altimeter. Look at it this way. The service ceiling, as published, is the highest density altitude to which the airplane will climb. If the temperature at 10,000 feet is 20 degrees C above standard, a not unlikely happening in the summer and fall, the density altitude is very close to the service ceiling of an airplane like a Skyhawk or a Warrior. The main point is that before doing any mountain flying, best compare the forecast temperature aloft with standard and know in advance what performance should be available. Sure, we go to the mountains in the wintertime, too, for skiing or business or sometimes just for the scenery. But in the cold time of year, density altitude isn't so much of a problem, especially if you have a hot performer like the Avanti. In the wintertime, a mountain challenge can come from strong wind flowing over the rough terrain and the corresponding turbulence and up and down drag. Two, most of us think in terms of mountain flying as being in the west, but the mountains in the center of the country, Mount Magazine in Arkansas is highest there at 2,753 feet above sea level, and in the east, where Mount Mitchell is at 6,684 feet, can be very much a factor when the wind is blowing. It's really the height of a mountain from its base to its top that matters when the wind is blowing, and in this regard, Mount Mitchell and the other high mountains of the east are as big as some of the mountains of the Rockies. Let me tell you a war story about wind and mountains and turbulence. I was at Asheville, North Carolina, not far from Mount Mitchell. The airport is about 4,400 feet lower than Mount Mitchell's peak. It was March, and the surface wind was gusting over 35 knots.